everyone, my name's Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this no face illustration from the Spirited Away uh, Japanese animated film. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with that film, uh, but if you're not, I highly recommend watching it because I think the art style is really compelling. And this character in particular uh, represents a lot of what I like about that movie. So I've got a watercolor paper texture already loaded into Procreate, and this time I'm using a brand new texture I just released yesterday. It's called the Forrester paper texture. And for the brushes, I'm gonna do all this with the regular watercolor brush kit. And as usual, I'll put links to all my materials in the description below. So I've already got a sketch loaded in, and you guys can have this one for free. I'll put a download link in the description. I just have it placed up here in the paper texture as the very, very top layer, and I've set it to multiply and I left the opacity at 100%. Uh, this one is a little bit lighter than how most of my sketches are, so I think it'll look fine. Now, I do have this kind of watercolor tin photograph. This is part of the sketch, and I just decided to include this because I thought it was cool. Uh, basically, this is gonna be our color palette, so if we do a long press, it's gonna choose the color. So these are all the colors we're gonna use, except for blue. I just had to find something to fill that one because there's six. <laughs> so we're not gonna use blue, this whole illustration is just gonna be these five other colors. So I'm gonna start painting by selecting a blank layer underneath the paper texture, just like you normally would. And for the brush, I'm gonna grab the abstract round brush. And the color we're gonna start with is this one here. It's kind of dark bluish gray color. And I'll just zoom out here and then just quickly fill out the silhouette of our no face here. Now after that first pass, I'll go over it again maybe at a slightly larger size. And then when I do the second layer, it's gonna end up a little bit darker, but I won't go all the way down. I'll just kind of stop about at this point. I think that's pretty good. Next, I'm gonna grab the water blender brush at the bottom of the list here. And at a pretty large size, uh, I'll just kind of fade this. I want this to have a kind of ombre fade, I guess. And after that, I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and just clean up where I went way beyond the sketch. Uh, the uh, proportions here are especially important around the head but the rest of the body down here, it doesn't matter if we go over the lines too much. There we go, that looks really good. Uh, next, I'm gonna do some of the face details and I'm gonna start that on another layer. So I'll just make a new layer that's above everything. And I'm gonna grab this kind of ivory color. There we go. And using the abstract round brush again, kind of at a smaller size this time. Uh, I'm gonna fill out the kind of oval of the face. It might be hard to see on the video, but I can just barely see the outline of the sketch here. Now this is showing up darker than our actual color here, and that's because there's some transparency going on. So to make this a little bit more opaque and a little bit whiter, I'm gonna duplicate this uh, layer here. So we'll duplicate it maybe again. There we go, three copies is enough in this case, and I'll just pinch those together. Next, if I turn off the sketch, uh, you can see the face is kind of lumpy. So I'm gonna fix that with the eraser brush uh, at a pretty small size and just carefully go in there kind of along the border and fix that. So there we go, that looks much better. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the sketch back on. Next, I wanna add a little bit of shading to this uh, face kind of mask design. And I'm gonna start doing that with the uh, selection tool set to freehand. And first I'll add a shadow kind of on one side so I'll make a kind of crescent-shaped selection like that. Hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just darken it a little tiny bit. Next, I'm gonna do the highlight over here. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool again, still set to freehand. And this time I'll make a kind of oval-shaped selection. And I'll feather it out quite a bit. Now to brighten this, I'm gonna go to the curves tool, to the layer. And I'm just gonna raise this kind of bottom node. And this just brightens it in a sort of nicer, smoother way than the uh, brightness adjustment. So I just prefer to use this sometimes, especially with very light colors. Next, I'm gonna move on and do the details on the mask. So I'll make another layer above everything. And I'll start with the uh, eyes and the mouth. So I'm gonna grab this pure black color. And for the brush, uh, this time I'm gonna use the fine liner pen brush. Kind of a small size, maybe 15%. And I'll just fill in the, uh, the eyes and the mouth real quick here. After that, I'm gonna fill out the rest of the details on the face. Uh, it's really simple. Just keep in mind that these smaller ovals, those are that greenish color. And then this kind of grayish blue color, those are the larger shapes here. 
So I'll just fill those out real quick. Now, one of the reasons I love this character is it's almost like the opposite of Irreville. I've talked about Irreville in the past and how a lot of her characters are like extremely cute, but then their facial expressions are a little bit sour. And that kind of contrast makes them uh, not exactly like childish illustrations, but I'm not really sure how to describe it. It just adds a nice contrast there. Now, this character is almost the opposite. It's a very kind of almost scary illustration, but the face is totally cute. So this is a great time to give this guy a little bit of a smile. So to do that, I'll just turn off the sketch real quick. Now here's all the details of the face. They're on that one layer. Now I'm gonna zoom in on the mouth and using the selection tool set to freehand, I'm just gonna kind of draw a box around it like this. It's really important that I'm just selecting the mouth, and not the kind of chin detail there. Then I'm gonna grab the arrow tool. I'm gonna select the warp option. And this will let me kind of slightly bend this and I'm gonna do my best to shape it into kind of a cute smile. There we go, that looks pretty good. And to apply those, I'll just deselect it. So there we go, the mask is done. And now I can move on and do the arms. And the arms are about midway down the torso here, so I'll turn the sketch back on. And I'm gonna do those on another layer, so I'll make a new layer above everything. And I'm gonna use that same kind of bluish gray color for this. Brush-wise, I'll stick with the fine liner pen. And at probably the same size I did the face details with, I'll just do my best to roughly fill out these arms. So the arms are done, but they did turn out a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna go to the hue, saturation, and brightness adjustment and just brighten them a little bit so they stand off a little bit better. And then also to kind of accentuate them a little bit more, I will add a shadow. But first, let me turn off the sketch. We really don't need the sketch anymore. Now, if I look at the hands down here, they're basically disappearing. And that's because they don't stand off enough from the background. So to add a shadow, I'll just select the body of no face. I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'll just make a selection like this, just behind each of these arms. Then I'll feather those out, hue, saturation, and brightness, and then I'll just darken that selection. There we go, that looks better. And even still, in this case, they don't stand out quite enough. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the layer with the hands and I'll just brighten the ends of them there. So I'll grab the selection tool, select the hands, feather that one out, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just brighten it just to give them a little bit more contrast. And we're almost done here. Um, just to finish this up, I'm gonna add some interesting shadows on the body. So I'm gonna make sure the body is selected. I'm gonna grab the selection tool again, set to freehand, and I'm gonna make a selection that just kind of chases up uh, each side, just like that, and then circles back. Hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just darken it. And this is just gonna give us some interesting lines and kind of layering effect there on the edges. Next, I wanna increase the fade that's happening kind of towards the bottom here. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool again, set to freehand. This time I'll make an oval-shaped selection. I'll feather it out quite a bit. I'll go to the curves adjustment this time for the layer. And just like before, I'm gonna grab that bottom node and just raise it up. And the point of that is just to make the bottom look a little bit thinner, a little bit fading away. Uh, this is very characteristic uh, of this character in the movie. And to totally finish this one up, I'll just open the layers panel. I'll merge everything onto one layer. Then I'm gonna grab the eraser brush. And again, I'm just gonna carefully kind of cut away at the edges because I did see in a few areas it didn't look quite right. So I'm just gonna shape this so it's a little bit skinnier. And there we go, this one is all done. And here's what it looks like when I print it out. Now I know this was a really simple illustration uh, today, but I really enjoyed this one. There's something about the result here. It brings me back to basics and helps me realize that you don't need to spend hours and hours to make something that you're satisfied with. Sometimes the thing that you want to paint that, is, that comes easy to you, that's exactly the thing that you should paint. I already mentioned this in the beginning, but I did use a different paper texture in this video. Uh, it's called the Forrester texture, and it's really uh, different than any of my other textures. I've been kind of refining it and working on it for quite a while now, and I think it's mostly suitable for illustrations like this. It's, it's sort of like storybook in a way where it's really suitable for simple illustrations that don't need a huge amount of texture. 
And if that sounds like a paper texture you'd like to try, go ahead and check out the Etsy store. It's up there as the most recent product, and uh, I'd love to hear what you think about it. And that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.